Okay, so here's a scene that we're going to create really quick. Let me show you what it does. So we click play. Okay, this is a composite of two cameras. When we click on the cubes, you get a uh, response from you script in the top left corner there. So let me show you how this is done. Okay, quick overview. We have a main camera. Main camera is set uh, to mixed calling mask. We turn off the UI layer. We've got a UI camera set to orthographic. You see the box here. It's a graphic under projection mode. Um, it's set to calling mask UI only. Okay. Oops, not to nothing. UI only. Okay. The other important thing here to note is that it's at the depth only, and the depth is one, so it'll be drawn on top of the main camera, which is set to skybox, which is while well, you see the skybox in the background, you also set it to a, a solid color and you get you know, the same results. Um, but its depth is set to negative one, so it's drawn underneath the uh, well, it's drawn first before the um, UI camera is drawn on top of it. So, the UI camera is also in the UI layer, and these cubes are in the UI layer. So, what that does is we have our main camera here. We push this cube down, so it's touching the plane there. Okay. We go back to the main camera. You'll see here we can't see that cube at all in the main camera. Now, if I change that cube's layer to default, back to the main camera, we can see it's present now. Uh, so, that is kind of how you sort this stuff out. So, let me undo real quick and then we'll recreate this scene. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new scene. So let me scroll up to File, new scene. Uh, let's go ahead and save. Okay, so by default, Unity gives us a new scene with a main camera in it, and it's got an audio listener on it. So that's good. We're going to put it in another camera. So we go to create other, and where's camera, 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 Oop, up top, camera. Okay, so whenever you make a new camera, it puts an audio listener on it. And uh, you can only have one audio listener in a uh, scene at a time, or Unity gives you errors. So just to show you real quick, if I hit play, so you get this message down here. It's, it's just firing one off every frame. That's because there's two audio listeners. So we're going to go ahead and remove the one from the UI camera, um, because the assumption is a UI camera. We don't um, close G UI camera. We don't need a audio listener on, so we'll just remove. Generally, you want your sound to come from wherever the, the game camera is, because that's you know the world that you're going to see. Uh, our UI camera is way the heck out there, so I'm just going to bring it back up to zero. Okay, and I think this one here is it's one and negative ten. Okay, so I'm actually going to put this at four. You can put it anywhere really, because once you've separated the layers, they can't see each other, or what's on their own layer, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to go ahead so we can see some stuff in the scene here, let me just clear this, and throw a plane in, and we're going to make sure that plane is in the default layer. Okay, so, game objects create other, and plane, and I'm just going to go ahead and zero it. Okay, so now if we look at our, our main camera, can see that. I'm also going to add a uh, light. Uh, let's do a point light. And let's just drag it up a little bit. Uh, just so we can kind of see what's going on in the scene a little bit better. Okay, so now when we look at the scenes for our main camera, we, we can see the plane. Um, 
So we're going to go ahead and add some boxes and we're going to get them separated so that they're not seen by the main camera, but rather seen by the UI camera. So game object, I'll create other, throw a cube in there. Um, again, I'm going to zero the cube. Okay, let's drag it up a little bit. Yeah. Maybe back a little so we get some light on the, the front of the cube. So our main camera, you can see that right now, we haven't set anything in the main camera. So let's go and take a look, or the main camera, the UI camera. And of course, see the main camera can see that cube too. So we're gonna go set up the UI camera. Um, so our UI camera, we don't, uh, where it says clear flags. Oh, by the way, you should probably read documentation on this. If you click on that little book with a question mark, it'll bring up the documentation, and then you'll understand what these mean. But uh, depth for, or sorry, depth only um, won't draw a background, so it doesn't paint on top of whatever it's already drawing on a uh, skybox or a background color. It lets the first camera that was rendered draw through. Um, and then it draws on top of that. So we don't want it to do everything. We want to set up a culling mask. Now, by default, the UI layer wasn't here. So the way you get layers is you go up to where it says layer, go add layer. And you see where I added the UI layer? But we're going to go ahead in this one, I'm going to make a new one. GU, uh, GUI layer. Okay. And so now we have another layer. This is the one we're going to use in this scene. Uh, I'm just not going to delete the this one because it did, well, it, it break the first one, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to use that, that one there. So we're done here. We can go back. And uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure our camera is on the GUI layer. We want to make sure our cube is on the GUI layer. Then our camera, of course, is set to perspective. Which is, you know, you could do for a user interface, um, but we're going to go ahead and set it to orth orthographic. So we have projection view, perspective, orthographic, and it gives us this, I mean, crazy huge box. And you see our, our cube turned to that little teeny speck. So we're just going to change this to 4, and I don't know, like a depth of 20. And so you see that now is the, the size of our our camera's viewable area. So for instance, if we take this cube, actually let's, um, so we can see it there. I'm gonna go to the game view. And so the, uh, the cube, this is an interesting experiment here, is being seen by both cameras. So what we're getting is the, uh, the one in the middle, which is pretty much spot on, you know, seems kind of flat, is the one the GUI camera is seeing. And then the one up top is the one the main camera sees. Our main camera is, is down low there. So it's kind of this crazy effect. But we're going to sort that out. So we go back to scene and uh, go to the GUI camera. And now the GUI camera, where it says colon mask, everything, we're just going to hit nothing. And then I'm going to go pick GUI. So our cube pops back up down there. And now the main camera shouldn't be able to see that cube. So I can see it floating up there. So where it says calling mask everything, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off GUI. And so now it says mixed. See how that everything isn't checked? And then on our GUI camera, everything is checked. So now when we look at the composite, we've got a box that's being seen on the orthographic GUI camera, and the main camera sees the plane. So I can go ahead and grab that cube and I can, I can move it wherever I want. You see how it's orthographic, it's not, it's not uh, getting any perspective there. Uh, I'm gonna pause the recording, my dogs are barking. We're back. Okay, I'm back. Um, we're gonna go ahead in this view and duplicate the cube. Uh, control D and um, drag it over. Oops, that's up. Over. So we see we got uh, multiple buttons on camera. And you can take more time and care to position these, but I'm just going to do it real quick. I will name this one Q1. I will name this one Q2. So we get different names. Okay. And let's go back to our scene. 
Okay. So we've effectively isolated these two um, cameras and what they can see now. There's one more thing you need to keep in mind. If you have a GUI layer and it's hidden, you could still collide with it. Um, so if, for instance, your, um, your buttons were at zero, zero, and your game world starts at zero, zero, the character might run into the buttons because they need to have colliders on them to be able to interact with ray casts. So we have to set the collision mask to make sure that doesn't happen. That's actually pretty easy. So we go over here, we go edit, and we go to project settings, physics, and this brings up this crazy um, table here. And this is the collision, collision matrix. And once again, you click on the little book here, it'll give you more information on it. But basically, anywhere a box is checked, it'll do collision against those things. So um, if something's in a default layer and the GUI layer, Unity will run collision checks against them. So we just want to turn off the ones that are all affected against the GUI layer. Uh, just like I did here, you see in the UI layer. They're all turned off, but we want collisions to still take effect on the GUI layer with the GUI layer. So see GUI and GUI. This should allow us then to do ray casting and stuff like that. So if you're uh, going to do finger touching with a, a like an iPad or, or a Android tablet, um, those touches will be, you'll be using ray casts, and then those can hit the objects in that layer. So we're good there. Okay. Now we're going to apply some code to this. There's these cubes that do something when we play the game. So I'm going to go up to Tool, Detox Studio, and we'll launch that up. Um, I wrote a really short graph for this already, and I'm going to load it up here, and I'll just walk you through it. Okay, like I said, really simple. The mouse cursor event is a, is a great way to start testing this. So. I've connected the uh, down, on mouse down socket to this concatenate, which takes one string and concatenates it with another string or variable. So as you see here, I've got mouse down. I just put uh, some text, and it's going to add behind that text the name of the object, the owner, that's having these events occur. And then I'm just going to print it to the screen in the... Um, in the upper left corner. So this is really simple. I need to save it again since I changed it. Um, so, you know, we can, on the form, I can give you examples and we can discuss their more complex ways to raycast and do multi-touch and things like that. But this is just a simple example to get you going, get your camera layers set up. So once that's done, we're going to close out of UScript. Now, all of our generated code, so if you look at our project hierarchy here, you're going to have a gizmos folder that uscript throws in. That's that little dot guy there. Um, you should make a folder for your project. In this case, I've got uh, the hanging app, uh, uscript basic geometry buttons, and the uh, basic geometry button scene, plus this one that we've been working in, which, you know, it would be wise to save my work, wouldn't it? So I'm going to save as, and we'll just do... Uh, test. That's good enough. Okay. And then just drag that in here. Okay. So in the uscript folder, the uscript project files, we'll unfurl this, and you're going to get nodes, which is where you put custom nodes if you have any, um, if you make any in the future, and you get uscripts. And in the uscripts folder, you see the script that we made here. And then under generated code, we'll see two scripts. So this first one is the actual script that was generated. And this component references it. Um, so what we're going to do is we want to drag that component onto one of our cubes. So we're going to go over here. And we'll just drop that component on there. It's that easy. We'll do this on the other cube. Okay. So what that does is that component then links to this code, so that way when you rebuild or if you had to delete these to um, rebuild your scene or if there was an error, the relationship is maintained. Um, so it doesn't break, you know, this 
uh, script on your object will stay consistent. So now when we test our scene, let's hit play over here. So we see the composite of two cameras, and when I click on a cube, the mouse event is firing. And it's telling you which cube, cube one, cube two. And um, there's our script over here. So it's pretty simple. That's how you do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zip this up and post the video. And I'll send you a link as soon as I... <laughs> you already have the link if you hear me saying this. So hopefully this helps you out. Uh, if you need any more um, guidance, let me know. I'll do my best to get you going. Sorry about the uh, late video here. But uh, thanks for your patience. And... Uh, Yep. Yeah.